Hi, Tony Sells here. We got a treat today, man. I've got uh, founder uh, Josh Mitchell with Design on Tap, and one of the uh, one a great agency down here downtown, just doing some cool things. Really good at UI UX. I mean, uh, the probably the best, and that's saying something in this town because we got a lot of technology companies here, and you guys have really kind of carved out a niche for yourself and a name to to really show how important. UI and UX is to the overall experience, right? That we're in, and since we have so many uh, um, software companies being developed in this town, you know, living and dying by whether or not those buttons are in the right place, and I'm yeah. oversimplifying stuff, right? <laughs> but but that's there's a real art, a real balance in art and science here. How do you how do you what's your process like to even help clients? Figure out, you know, where where everything goes. Why does it go there? You know, um, the size, the look, the the feel. What you're trying to communicate that through this through these these mediums that are changing every day. Yeah, uh, it's it's quite a process. Yeah, uh, I, I, the problem though is a lot of the uh, the terminology and the the pieces are similar across a lot of companies. So mm -hmm. a lot of companies have like wireframing, mm -hmm. a process of like going through like the user flow, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of companies kind of skip out or don't really like pay attention to like what problems you're solving through the wireframe. Yeah. And every time as you're like, as you're going across to, like the wall with wireframes, mm -hmm. you know, you've got problems that you're, you're fixing. Mm -hmm. And as you fix a problem, you start going through the user flow again, you realize you created a new, new problem, problem for yourself. Right, yeah. So you're constantly going back you're constantly redesigning mm -hmm. the wireframes mm -hmm. until you get like that really nice user experience and that mm -hmm. user flow. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, once we have, so, I mean, we start out with a client just kind of going through like kind of that discovery phase, right. figuring out like what is the actual goal? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times uh, clients would like to try to tell you like, this is what I need. This is what I need designed. This is yeah. what I need built. Mm -hmm. And then we have to come in and say, okay, first stop, let's look at, you know, maybe do, sometimes we're doing an audit, sometimes if it's brand new, mm -hmm. you know, we have to figure out what that process is supposed to look like. Right. And then we'll, we'll sit down, talk through that process and actually start to like, so like with Dino, Dino's an example of mm -hmm. a client that we do a lot of UX UI for. We actually meet with our product and design team like every week. Yep. And uh, we, we get to talk to the, like their end users, which mm -hmm. are teachers. Right. And we get to, we get to float these um, wireframes in front of these teachers mm -hmm. and have them actually like have like interactive mm -hmm. prototypes to go through and that gives us a lot of data and information we do a lot of event tracking on that and then we're able to make smarter decisions moving forward well I think what's important uh, that you you know as we've been talking it's like it's really understanding what you know this agile iterative process is being applied to business you know we the client thinks they they want X right, yeah. and after you talk to them, after you've done that, um, after you've built it, you know you they they change their mind, and and then it and then even a lot of times you know people use it, and and the user changes the client's minds, yeah, and then the client brings that back to you, and you if you don't build in that ability to you know, create that, iter that iteration where it's gonna end up being a collaboration, a co-creation, whatever that is, right. from where we both thought it started, right? Yeah. That's what, that's really, it's so important to partner. It's so yeah. important to, to, to have a mechanism to do so because waterfall just doesn't work anymore and, and you're not gonna get the product you want. And, and I think that's one of the things that make you guys different. I think the other thing that makes you guys different is, is this idea that you know, you're, when you create something, the flip side of that is you, it, you're, it's not your baby. You're not gonna protect it with your life. You're right. throwing it out there in order for it to grow into something better. Is that fair? Right, and it's interesting because clients will come with a scope this big, uh -huh. right? And we'll actually go through and start chopping pieces out of that idea. Because mm -hmm. like your idea is too complex. Mm -hmm. We need to simplify and figure out what the actual mm -hmm. experience should be. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times when they're building like an app, for example, they want to try to put all these different things in because like, well, this app has it, this app has that. And I think it would be great if like this, our app can do all these things. Right, right. It's like, but we need to do what we're good at. Yeah. And we need to focus on that. Mm -hmm. And you know, as the app grows, maybe we can start adding on some of those features, but you got to be careful about that. Mm -hmm.
with any type of user well, experience. Well, and I, it's, it, you know, we, we call it MVP, right? It's like you got to get that MVP out there, yeah. that most that minimum viable product that that to allow users to interact with that to see you, you might start here and end up over there thinking you were going to be, you know, five miles of the road this way. And that's that is very uncomfortable for a lot of businesses to get in that process, especially if they've been used to buying, you know, a waterfall. You know, it's if you're building a house, the blueprints are there. You yeah. know, you know what the house is going to look like. You might change your mind on, on what color you want certain rooms, but we don't build houses. You know, we're building stuff that 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 is that it, we have an idea, uh, we have a, 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 a visualization of what we want it to be, and then the client has their idea, mm -hmm. and then consumers are gonna affect that and change all that. And they right. may throw it all out the window. Is, yeah. am I cra is that correct? Yeah, that can happen. Yeah, <laughs> so, so when you guys, um, you know, when you're looking for companies like this, ideal companies are one that, th that experience is really gonna make and break their business model, right? Yeah. Whether it's online, whether it's their mobile device, whether it's, a, th that is an ecosystem that, that can't break. In fact, it has to improve or create value on its own. Right. And some of that is what you guys understand is the innate functionality of those, of those um, tools and how to optimize it there. Talk to me about that. So with the user experience, like, um, I mean, one example is like with the wireframes, like it, it doesn't just start and stop with the wireframe. Mm -hmm. On the back of each wireframe, we're actually writing like objectives mm -hmm. of like what the user is trying to accomplish at this point. Yeah. And uh, that really helps with, you know, going into design, making sure that when we start making design choices, mm -hmm. that things are following that path and we're actually making that that happen per se. So, you know, I'm going to, I want to shift gears on you because we got a little bit of time left in the show. You know, you are also one of those guys that's a serial entrepreneur. And you, you know, part of the part of the the challenge with that is we've never seen a business idea we don't like, right? Right. <laughs> or we at least want to try it, or we at least yeah. want to see what's out there. Yeah. So when you're when people come to you and they've got their 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 idea, and and you're processing how do I make this real, and and on and beyond that, will it work? And will will it see adoption? And will it see a marketplace? And you know. You and I kind of both know after both being down this route, you know, your scars teach you a lot more than than you know than anything else, yeah, right? Yeah. And 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 so you have some of those, and you have the successes. What are the what are the three things you try to get companies to learn, right? I mean, yeah. we're gonna get it down. We only have time for three. Just think about what are the three things they've got to think about when they're trying to get that application in that, you know, whether it's mobile, online, any any of those things, what are the three things you try to fundamentally get them come back to think about? Um, I mean, so, I mean, since we're so focused on design and the user experience, the first thing I, I really think about is, like, how are you going to want to use this? Mm -hmm. You know, ask yourself that. Are you going to use this? Are do you see other people using this? Mm -hmm. Have you asked other people if mm -hmm. they're going to use it? Mm -hmm. And then the next step is if you're monetizing it, of course, is like, are people willing to actually pay Buy. money? Right. Uh, and I, th I still love the idea of like, uh, like buying AdWords and like different, um, like Facebook ads and stuff to test like mm -hmm. an idea of like mm -hmm. if something is interesting to somebody that they'll actually buy it mm -hmm. and like have them actually have like a price point there mm -hmm. and get data off that like mm -hmm. I think that's a really usable tool and we've actually used that in the past to figure out you know is this worth going even Kickstarter is a great way to like even test to see tremendously you know, good way. Yeah. are people even interested in buying this yeah. before I spend my like life trying to build this mm -hmm. so um, and then you know like is, is it something that you can be proud of like at the end of the day because mm -hmm. I mean you got to feel good about it I just heard a really inter interesting interview about a guy who's making six-figure income off of a Bible app, mm -hmm. and he feels bad about it now what? because he's uh, he's not a he's not a believer, and he's making tons of money off of basically selling something he doesn't believe in. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So so, so you got to believe in it. Yeah. You got to you 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 better be willing to buy it. Yeah. And would you use it? And and I and and I know that sounds so simple, it but is. but when you <laughs> when you see when you see. Um, uh, when you go to Verge or you go to some of these uh, companies that are trying to get funded, um, and I and, and we see it like at even at tier two and at tier three funding, 
you know, they kind of lose that sometimes, right? Right. They get they get greedy or big eyes of like, this is going to make a lot of money. Like I can see that this is going to make a lot of money, but is it something that you're passionate about? Is it something that you're really curious about learning and, mm -hmm. and you're going to put everything in for it? So. Mm -hmm. Fun, fundamentally, it starts with utility and functionality and allowing people to do something in a way that wasn't done before. It's still a tool in the end. Yeah. I mean, technology is a tool. Granted, it's it's beyond a, a, a round wheel, yeah. but it's got to function. It's got to create and make our life better. Yeah. Thanks so much for being on the show, buddy. Yeah. Appreciate you. Awesome. Thanks.